In this video, we're going to generalize the material of the previous video to higher order derivatives. Maybe instead of the derivative of y equaling a function of x, we have the second derivative of y equals a function of x or the third derivative, or whatever. We can still solve those problems using integration, existence and uniqueness changes just a little. We'll summarize, then quickly move to an example. Suppose instead of the derivative of y is a function of x, we have the nth derivative of y is a function of x. We can still solve this using integration. The difference becomes that we now need n initial conditions to get to unique solutions. And usually those initial conditions are given for the function and for the lower order derivatives. And we'll see what I mean by this in just a moment when we look at an actual example. The der second derivative of y with respect to x equals x. And we give initial conditions to ensure uniqueness. And you now see what I meant instead of being told that y of 1 equals 2, and then being given another piece of information about y, y of 4 equals whatever, say, the other initial condition tells us what the first derivative is doing at a point. So we're given con initial conditions for the function and for the lower order derivatives. If we take this and integrate both sides, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that integration undoes differentiation. So integrating the second derivative gets us the first derivative. And this um, has as its antiderivative one half x squared plus a constant. And we can solve for this constant using our initial conditions. For a moment, I'll just leave it to be. Once again, integration undoes differentiation. So if we integrate this side, we get y. And if we integrate the right-hand side, we get this cubic polynomial. And you see we have two unknowns, and that's why we need two initial conditions. So 
we all use the initial condition y prime of zero equals three to find c. When x equals zero, the derivative is three. Three equals zero plus c. So c equals three. y of 1 equals 2. When x equals 1, y equals 2. I suppose we now need a common denominator. And we find that D is negative seven. Six.